Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going over this pistol right here. It's the Glock 40. Uh, no, in all seriousness, this is the High Point C9 pistol. So this is their compact 9mm. Probably the most popular pistol that High Point puts out, at least that I see anyway in gun shops out there. So um, I know a lot of people on this channel are going to laugh and sneer and jeer at this pistol um, because it is so inexpensively made and has some sort of unique features to it that you're not going to find on higher end pistols. But I wanted to give it a serious look and the reason I want to do that is because, um, you know, at this point in my life, um, I've worked hard and, uh, and, and sacrificed to get to where I can afford um, some pretty nice guns. But at, at one point in my life, that wasn't the case. You know, I remember having to save up a lot of money for, for me at the time to buy a used uh, Remington 870 Police, which back then I think was probably like 150 bucks, which for me was a lot. And that was the only firearm I had for a couple of years because that's all I could afford. So, you know, I remember what it's like to be like that. And I think a lot of people are in that situation financially but still want to defend themselves and the high point pistols are something that I think a lot of them are looking at so we're going to give it a fair shake today here and uh, basically we're going to go over the features of it the reliability the accuracy all that types of stuff we'll let the dogs take a look at it like we always do and uh, then we'll get into the details coming up next. Getting into the details of the gun, we'll start at the bottom and work our way up. Our magazine that it comes with is an eight rounder. Uh, it's the same magazine that they use for the 380 on the uh, nine millimeter version here. So you have a total capacity as it comes from the factory of eight plus one, so nine rounds with one in the chamber. They do also have these factory 10 round mags, as you guys can see here, the folks over at Gun Mag Warehouse sent these out to us, uh, a few of them to help us uh, get some more rounds through the pistol. So I certainly appreciate that. We'll put a link down below for them. But the eight round mag is gonna be uh, one of the things we're gonna talk about several times probably in this video, but one big one is that we had a number of nosedive malfunctions. You guys can see it right there, it just happened. Um, so I pulled one round out and you guys can see sort of how the round following it nosedive instead of what it should do is go like that. So that way it's at the proper angle to feed into the chamber. So this gun had a few malfunctions uh, outside of that, but the overwhelming majority of malfunctions we had were nosedive malfunctions just like that. And just kind of download it and see if it happens a few times. Eh, I guess not, but uh, it happened in any magazine we had it in. I have two eight rounders and three 10 rounders, and it just happened repeatedly. It seemed to happen more on the first couple rounds, and once it kind of got through a few rounds, it wouldn't happen again. But yeah, you can kind of see how it would happen there just even watching this here. So the magazines seem to be the issue in terms of uh, reliability more often than anything else with the gun, but um, it is what it is. So we'll move along with that. Um, the grips themselves have a little bit of a pebble texture on there, but it's not aggressive at all. So some folks might like that because if you're carrying it inside the waistband, it's not gonna be abrasive to your skin. The downside is it's not going to uh, have a good grip there and the gun's kinda gonna move around on you if you have sweaty hands or your hands are bloody or anything like that. Uh, we do have some serrations though on the back strap of the pistol as well as here on the front strap and it has sort of a, almost like a finger groove cut in there. It fits my hand fine. I don't have a problem with it. One thing I do like there on the magazine is it has that little extension which most people will probably find a little bit more comfortable than if it didn't have it. Now one thing to uh, keep in mind 
is that the magazine release there is not ambidextrous and it does not always drop free. Um, most of the time I would say the mags drop free, but every now and then it wouldn't. Uh, so take that for what it's worth. Uh, we also have a safety here on the left side of the pistol. When it's in the up position like that, it is on safe. And you guys can see here, even with the magazine inserted, because the pistol does have a magazine disconnect, it will not fire without the magazine in. The trigger will not move. Now at this point, we're gonna put it on fire, verify we're clear, pull the trigger, and you will see it will fire. So cycle the action here, and let's talk about the trigger. So the way the trigger is designed on this pistol, it almost makes you learn uh, bad shooting habits. And what I mean by that is it's kind of hinged. You guys can see that little pin there on top of it. And if you, or rather when you pull the trigger, you kind of have to push down and back. So it makes you almost flinch to shoot the gun. Um, in terms of break, it's not terrible. Um, it's actually relatively crisp, but like I said, that angle you have to put it at is just odd. So we'll cycle it one more time. We'll get it on the trigger pull scale here and see what exactly it pulls at. If I can get it through there, there you go. It's always easier to do if you're not doing it on camera. You guys can see there on my scale, it's breaking right between seven and eight pounds. It's not a terrible trigger in terms of the poundage or break, but again, that angle it forces you to pull at, again, almost makes you want to or have to flinch just to be able to pull this trigger. The slide on this pistol is much larger than other semi-automatic nine millimeter pistols that you're gonna see out there on the market, and that's because this pistol is a straight blowback design, meaning that the barrel itself is fixed to the frame, and what actually absorbs the uh, energy as the round is fired is the mass of the slide reciprocating. So this pistol is relatively heavy. It comes in at 29.6 ounces on my scale, so compared to other you know, polymer frame nine millimeters out there, it's it's pretty heavy and again that's all due to the slide. The slide itself is made out of a zinc and aluminum alloy that's proprietary to high point so it's not steel. It does have a powder coat finish that you see here. They also offer it in some camouflage patterns as well as a hundred dollar bill pattern that I have as well um, just for kicks. Um, the sights here are going to be three dot sights so you have yellow up front, two red dots in the rear, it also comes with a peep sight. Um, I'm not sure really who's taking advantage of that, but I did take advantage of this uh, windage adjustable rear. Um, out of the factory, mine was shooting about five or six inches to the right um, at about 15 yards. So I zeroed that in with a screwdriver, very simple design there, and got it to shoot point of aim, point of impact uh, from there. In terms of accuracy, it's not bad at all. Um, the barrel itself is uh, 3.5 inches long, so it's not, too long. It's not so short though that you're going to need specialty ammo to get it to perform uh, ballistically downrange. I'm not going to disassemble the pistol here because I have a, a video on cleaning lubricating the high point. Plus we have a roll pin that you have to drift out. So it's not all that simple um, in terms of maintenance, but blowback designs like this are pretty simple and don't really need as much you know maintenance as other pistols or other designs rather I should say out there on the market. I'm sure some of you guys watching this video have never actually seen a high point. So to give you an idea of what it looks like uh, in terms of size wise, it's pretty close to a Glock 19 in many ways, um, width, length, all that stuff, pretty similar in terms of size. Of course, the Glock 19 is going to give you 16 rounds and uses a totally different operating principle. Um, just to give you an idea, compared to a smallish revolver that we have here, which is a Taurus M85. You guys can kind of see how it stacks up there. The, the revolver is much smaller, much lighter. Of course, uh, the exception there is going to be the width there at the cylinder. And then the uh, Zastava, this is the M70 or M57, depending on the caliber you choose there but you guys can see there how they stack up size wise we covered most of the important details a couple we left out is going to be price point this one here has an msrp i think of 179 you're of course going to be able to find them cheaper out there in most of your gun shops or if you're shopping online uh, you'll probably be able to pick one up cheaper than that as well so uh, in terms of reliability like we uh, talked about earlier we had some serious issues with this gun. Uh, this pistol right now has just over 500 rounds through it. And uh, you know, I've been shooting the majority of it, of course, was Minuteman Munitions. First couple range trips out, we were having some malfunction. I was like, maybe it's just the ammo. Tried different ammo. We've tried 
Um, tons of different stuff. Fiocchi, all brass case. I tried some Wolf, uh, not brass case, steel case stuff, thinking maybe that would work. If, it, you know, this gun's cheap gun, maybe it likes cheap ammo. Didn't like that. We tried some Federal HSTs, some Winchester, um, Jacket Hall Point Ranger bullets, I believe 147 grain. We tried several different loads of the American Eagle Palmer stuff, and it was generally unreliable with all of them. The majority of malfunctions, like I said, were those nosedive type malfunctions. Um, but I wanted it to be reliable, guys. I wanted it to be able to come here and be like, yeah, this gun's under $200 and it's ugly, but it works. And unfortunately, I can't do that today. So probably, you know, like I said, just over 500 rounds, this gun's probably had 30 or 40 malfunctions during that time. So just not good reliability in any way, in my opinion. So uh, that's not good. One thing that is good is that from everything I've heard, High Point has exceptional customer service. You know, I've heard stories of guys like running these over on a farm accidentally and then High Point fixing it for them and sending them a brand new gun for free so uh, their CS uh, customer service is supposed to be as good as anything out there on the market um, we talked about like you know the features of it ie it's very top heavy due to that slide the blowback impulse the recoil impulse is a little bit weird again that's because of all that weight that sits above your hand. So anybody who's used to shooting other guns, uh, you're gonna find that to be a little bit odd. Uh, also, if you shoot with a thumbs high grip like I tend to do, you can actually feel the slide reciprocating, which is, again, a little bit odd just due to the size of it. Um, but yeah, the reliability, that's the thing that kind of killed it for me. You know, if this gun was reliable, I'd be, I'd be here telling you all about it, laughing and telling you, hey, go pick yourself up a high point. They're fun for under $200, but this one simply hasn't been, um, especially when you look at some of the other options. Like the ones we showed earlier, those weren't, uh, those weren't just random. Uh, the Taurus M85 revolver I have, that thing's gone bang all the time. And really that thing in most gun shops and our most online stores is about $50 more than this. Of course, you only have five rounds, but five rounds that go bang is, is pretty good, right? And then also that Zestava, that one there is the, the nine millimeter model, but also the 7.62 Tokarov one. Uh, you can find those online. Again, $50, $60 more than this. Sometimes if you shop around, uh, especially on those ones, if you're willing to take a uh, surplus trade in or something like that. So if all you had is 120 bucks and this is what your local gun store had, and uh, it was the only thing in that price range, I would take it. It's better than a sharp stick and um, having something is always better than nothing. I would say that the gun every time went bang on the first round that we had in the chamber. Um, it was the cycling after that and sometimes not feeding that we had the problems. So having one round, uh, the ability to discharge one round rather, of course, is better than not having that ability. So uh, if that's all you have, I would say have at it. It's better than nothing. But if you can, if you can save up a little bit more for one of the other guns, um, some other budget guns out there, I'd probably do that um, over this high point if you're going to actually use it for self-defense. Now, if you guys are just buying the gun just to, you know, stick in the tackle box or something like that and not have to worry about maintenance and no serious type use, um, sure, um, go for it, right? But uh, any gun that you're going to depend or trust your life to, you know, you want it to be reliable. And at this point, I definitely cannot say this is it, at least not in my experience anyway. So that's pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions about it, by all means, post down below in the comment section, like always. You can also post over at my Facebook page as well. That's generally the best way to get in touch with me. Um, but that's going to wrap up the review. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you're new here and you like what you saw, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We hope to see all of you in the next video.